Hey everybody, this is round one of the new scenario, well, new for, for my playthrough, Trouble in Sandpoint, scenario one. This is, of course, the third scenario in the Burnt Offerings adventure, which is, of course, the first adventure in the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure path. Trouble in Sandpoint, uh, I guess we could sort of read what it says to us. As cowardly as they are, crafty goblins still lurk in Sandpoint, stirring up trouble. They've even revealed strange ruins beneath the town's streets. Ferret out the, loss, the, the last of the goblins and destroy the evil things they've unleashed before someone gets hurt. If I recall correctly, and I could be... I could be conflating two different adventures, I believe a pit has opened in Sandpoint, a, um, a sinkhole, and there is a bunch of interesting stuff underground, and so uh, the adventurers crawled. I could be thinking of Princess of the Apocalypse uh, in Red Larch. I think there's a pit as well. So anyway, one of those two things, whatever the story is, I don't remember off the top of my head, the, um, the goblins are attacking, things are attacking Sandpoint, and so we need to go help again. There are four locations for two players. There's the Shrine to Lamashtu, which is an evil god. Glassworks, which is a, a glassworks factory. A village house. And a Catacombs of Wrath, leading, I think, to the Shrine of Lamashtu, I would, I would imagine. If, if I recall correctly. Uh, so Trouble in Sandpoint has a villain, some henchmen. I've put them into their, their location decks as usual. There's the global rule, which is anyone's guess as to whether I'll remember. After a character encounters a wrathful sin spawn henchman, roll 1d6. On a 1, discard the top card of the blessings deck. So that means the timer deck is also under attack. Uh, we could lose time after we encounter a henchman, if I roll a one. No pressure. But that's what's at stake. So that's not great. I have rebuilt new decks, or re rebuilt the decks of Valeros and Sioni. Valeros has some fancy new weapons. I gave him a ranged weapon, because he found a short, uh, sh short bow last time, if you'll recall. I'll go ahead and draw the initial hand, and that's not a good hand um, because his his favored card type is a weapon, and so he his initial hand gets to insist upon having a weapon, uh, and this time he does. He's got a long sword, an ally, an armor, a shield, uh, and a mace, so that's pretty good. Now, he's got a special ability that if he discards a weapon, he gets to recharge it instead. And I keep forgetting about that. And that's an important ability because that helps me cycle through his, his deck without discarding. Uh, so what I really want to do, obviously, ideally, is find that Bastard Sword. And I know it's not, at the, so I know it's not the four cards at the bottom because I just discarded that hand. So it's it's somewhere in there. Now I'll I'll draw up for Sioni, and of course her starting hand gets to insist upon having a spell. Uh, she's got a Toad ally, a blessing of Lamashtu. Hey, I. What we're gonna be at your shrine later, Lamashtu? A blast stone, a blessing of the gods, bracers of protection, blessings of the gods. Well, there is no spell in there. So she gets to draw back up, and I see a. I see a discolored card there, which I'll explain in a moment. So there's a spell, Invisibility, so that'll help her evade things. Blessings of Two blessings of gods. An ally and a detect magic spell. So no attack spell, that's not good. But that actually brings me to this, um, to this point, which is, this is slightly discolored. Th this is from a different set. You, you might recall in the previous um, playthrough, or the previous scenario, I, I had some Skull and Shackles cards mixed into the waterfront, and it was terrible. It is probably one of the reasons that I didn't actually win the previous scenario, but it's, it's fun. You're not supposed to mix cards, just to be clear. This is not within the rule set. 
This is against the rule set. Uh, this is the Rise of the Rune Lords box, and so I'm not supposed to be mixing in Skull and Shackles cards. Um, but it's my game, and I'm going to do it because I, I like it. Uh, so, this is a Wand of Flame from the Skull and Shackles. It is an attack item. It is not a spell. I mean, it's a magical item, which is why I like to use it. Uh, and for the combat check, for your combat check, bury the card to roll a 1d6 plus a number of additional d6 equal to the adventure deck number of the current scenario. Um, I think that's just going to be a 1, unless unless it's been incremented. Yeah, so it's scenario 1. This is basically an attack roll of 2d6. You have to uh, bury the card so you don't get to use it again for the rest of the scenario. Unless you make an arcane uh, check, an arcane 10 check, to recharge it. So there's a chance of recharging. It's an attack item. And for Sione, I just feel like she's under under skilled, really, for attack. I mean, she can attack, but it costs her discarding cards to, to use her inborn um, attack spell. So I'm giving myself that wand just because it's a cool item, and I like to use cards, all the cards that I have. So that's what I'm doing. I'm mixing some, just, just that one card for this scenario. I haven't mixed anything else into this like I did last scenario, where I populated an entire location with Skull and Shackle stuff and nearly died because of it. So I think that's a good setup, and I think it's time that we could uh, start our, our exploration now. So I guess, as usual, I will start out with Valeros of the Tank. Incrementing... I, sh I should say decrementing. We're decrementing the deck. I guess we're incrementing the the times up part of the timer deck. Anyway, he's going to travel somewhere. And these are all horrible locations. This is a really tough scenario. The village house possibly is the least horrible. It has... Just one monster, one barrier, one weapon, a couple of allies. So, a couple of threats, but not all that many. Uh, what's this one? Oh, the glassworks. Yeah, this is a horrible place in the RPG. I remember this place. So there's three monsters there. I kind of feel like Valero should just start going... Going to the... Let's just start out with the with the tough location, really. It's not worth forestalling. The glassworks stands at the edge of Sandpoint. Here, artisans use sand and flame to create every sort of glassware, from common windows to elaborate colored pieces of art. Curtains have been drawn across the building's numerous windows, and it is curiously silent, although plumes of dark smoke still issue from many of its numerous chimneys. Oh yeah, I think the Shrine of Lamashtu is actually in the glassworks. That's... Yeah, I think I think that's correct. Maybe not. I don't know. I haven't played it in a while. If you fail a check, discard the top card of your deck. Oh my gosh. That's horrible. Uh, and then when closing, succeed at a Wisdom or Perception 6. Okay. So there's there's punishment. You're, you're, you essentially take damage for failing a check. Which is really, really bad actually. Like, that's really bad. Um, okay, well, uh, Valeros is there. He's at the, the glass house. Or, no, the glass works. And I guess we'll just start exploring. Okay, uh, standard bearer ally. So this is a charisma diplomacy check to acquire. His diplomacy is a D6 well, his charisma is a d6. Diplomacy is a plus two. So he has a free two there already. So he needs to roll a four or better. He rolled a four. Lucky. So he's acquired that ally. Well, as I always say, um, that timer deck doesn't slow down for anything. So I'm going to, I guess recharge or rather discard to explore 
Yeah. I think that makes sense. There's not a great imbalance of location cards to timer deck this time around. I will admit that. Um, I think there's something like maybe 36 cards in the decks and 30 in the timer deck. So I feel like there's a, a fighting chance to get through all of these cards. And technically, I don't have to get through all the cards. If he encounters the henchman the next time, then he gets to attempt to close this location. And then we won't have to go through all of those cards. He did not encounter the henchman. He encountered an enchanter. The difficulty to defeat the enchanter is increased by the adventure deck. Okay, so that's one. So that's this is a nine, not an eight. Before the encounter, the enchanter deals one force damage. After the encounter, <laughs> the enchanter deals one fire damage. I don't like the enchanter very much. So he can recharge the shield to absorb the force damage. Well, it says reduce this card, uh, recharge this card to reduce combat damage. But isn't this combat? Because it says, does it say before the combat or before the encounter? So the encounter hasn't happened yet. So recharge this to reduce combat damage. Well, that's, I guess that's not combat damage because the encounter hasn't started yet. Okay, that's, that's the logic. Okay, got it. So, he has to discard something. I am going to discard this mace. Because the mace gives him a plus d8. And so does the longsword. But the longsword discarded adds yet another d6. So yeah, I guess I'm going to discard the mace as damage, force damage. And now he gets to go to battle. So, he's got a d10. He's going to reveal his longsword to add a d8 to his combat roll. And even better, he has a 3 already because he is using melee. So we're, we're going up against a 9. So there's three taken off of that, so I need a, uh, a six off of, uh, out of these two die. There's a three and a seven. So we are good to go there. This enchanter has been defeated. But after the encounter, fire damage is taken can't win for losing, really. Or you can't lose for winning, I don't know. Um, so, and once again, I, I feel like the wooden shield, it can't, it, it doesn't sound like that's going to reduce the fire damage because that this is after the encounter. So I guess I'll discard the shield. I hate to do that, but I'm about to discard the Night Watch to explore again. I think. Am I going to do that? Yeah, I am. Alright, Valeros. Explore again. Glibness. Well, he doesn't really have a whole lot of chance to get this. Not impossible, though. It's a six. Intelligence, or arcane, or wisdom, or divine. He doesn't have divine. His intelligence is a d6. His wisdom is a d4. So obviously... Intelligence is the way to go here, and if he rolls a 6, he does not roll a 6, so this just goes away. So that was his turn. It's the end of his turn, so he's going to draw back up to his hand size. So now he's got a short bow, a bastard sword, that's what I want, and a potion of hiding. So not, not a terrible hand, uh, really. And... You know, I can I can always recharge this long sword to cycle through his deck. I probably should have done that this time around. I just forgot yet again. Okay, so that was uh, Valeros. So Sioni doesn't exactly have 
an attack spell right now. But she's got a spell that she could recharge. She's got a couple of spells she could recharge to use to evade. I'm kind of feeling like just going in strong with Sioni right now. I don't I don't know if that's the best tactic really, but that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm emboldened. And and together they are stronger. Uh because Valeros can always grant her a free D4 to combat. So it kind of makes sense to send her in. And I think I'm just going to try to knock out as many of this of these cards as possible. It feels bad to do it. I don't feel like there's a whole lot here, to be honest. But it, it just, I mean, we, we do have to get through them. Well, we can't cheat, so have to flip over a timer card. And now she can explore. A soldier, well, that's great, because uh, charisma is her most, that's her strongest skill. She gets a free plus two to uh, her diplomacy. And her Charisma die is a d12. She rolled an 8, so a total of 10. Uh, which beats a 6, so she acquires that ally. Which is really nice, because... Incidentally, I was just going to discard a card to explore again. Um, I think... this He, he adds a d4 to his... Uh, to strength uh, melee combat. Um, well, that's what Valeros is for. So we're going to discard this fellow and explore again for free, and it's a battle axe. That's a pity, because this would have been really great for Valeros. Well, would it have been? It's only a d6. Yeah, I'm not sure if I care. I mean, I care enough, I guess, to realize that if she fails this, she's going to take damage. That's too bad. Uh, so there's three, four, five, six... I don't see what she could possibly do, I mean, other than using a Blessing card. But then I feel like I'm discarding to avoid discarding. That doesn't feel like it makes sense. So this is just, yeah, Strength Melee. Well, you may recall that she has Strength D4, um, which means that it's impossible for her to get to an 8. She has a Strength D4 plus 1, actually, because I took a plus 1 to her Melee when she leveled up after the initial scenario, but that's still not going to get her to 8, so that goes away, and now she has to discard a card be because we're in a horrible place. And I guess, um, oh wait, what does it say? It says, if you fail a check, discard the top card of your deck. Oh, that's even worse, because I don't know, I don't know that I want to do that. A burglar gets discarded. Okay, luckily I don't care too much about that. Okay, so we're still here in a horrible place. We still really need to um, encounter a henchman. But I don't really know if I honestly want Sioni to encounter the henchman. That's, I guess, my, my greatest fear right now. I, I think I would rather Valeros explore this location. So I think I am backing down from my bold... My bold beginning. Okay, well, I'm going to... Let's just discard... No, should we do that? Because... My problem is that if Sioni goes into combat... I mean, she's got her Wand of Flame. And that's about it. She, uh, she In order to do... Well, she could evade as well. Oh, yeah, heck. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so... Back into Sioni's deck. So I'm going to just discard the Sage to explore again. For Sioni. And it's a zombie. Zombie is immune to the mental and poison. Uh, you only It only deals half damage. That's nice. If undefeated, each other character at this location summons and encounters a zombie. So we don't want that to happen. Uh, but we could use this fancy wand of flame. And... I mean, technically, what I should do is discard this, I think. And just use her her d12 plus a d6, her, her innate spell casting ability. But because I 
I enjoy this game and I enjoy the the lore and the flavor, I'm going to instead actually use this wand. For your combat check, bury the card to roll a d6, plus a number of additional d6 equal to the adventure deck number. This is adventure 1, so it's 2d6. You may additionally discard a spell. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, so it's 2d6, and technically she's supposed to bury this. But if she can make an arcane 10 check, she doesn't have to bury it. She can recharge it. So I'm going to... She's got a plus 2 to her arcane, naturally, and then a d12, 11, so she gets to recharge it. That's kind of what I was gambling on. That was the gamble. Now, whether this is going to be enough to defeat this zombie is a whole other question. However, as you'll recall, the reason I felt emboldened to send her in here is because Valeros can give her a free d4 to her roll. So, she's got 2d6 and a d4 to try to get to 9. 6 is a good start. 1 is not great. 7. 8, 9, 10. 3 on a d d10. So a d4, whatever that is. Okay, cool. So she 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 pulls it off just just barely. Uh 6, 1 and a 3 is exactly what I was hoping. Like the d4 could have rolled a 1, who knows. Um okay, so that's that's great. So she's defeated the zombie. And then now it would be crazy for her to continue. And I guess there's no point in doing that right now. Like I feel like I should but I can just I can use her blessings later. Oh, and she's got her force missile. That's good. The acolyte, the new ally that she gained last scenario. I can recharge this card to add a d4 to your arcane or divine check. So this is really that's that's a great hand. I'm happy with that hand. That was Sioni's turn. She took out a monster. Can't really complain. Let's increment our timer and explore. Potion of Ruggedness for Valeros. Intelligence check to get this thing. Um, his intelligence die is a d6, so he has to roll a 6. He rolled a 1. It's a 1. Uh, so he does not get the item, but worst, worst still, he gets to discard. He has to discard a a card, which is a blessing, which is really uh, pains me to lose that because that would have been a free exploration. Okay, I'm not ending his turn yet. I'm going to, um, I think, I'm going to recharge. Oh, can he do that though? Because, yeah, I guess he can't. Can he recharge? No, he can't recharge a card just for fun, I think. I think you have to recharge in by going into combat. I mean, a weapon. So, yeah, okay. So he's got four cards in his hand. So I, I think that was his turn. I don't see any way to squeeze another exploration round out of that. And I, I think what I was saying then, so one of these three cards has to be the henchman. And Sioni is pretty well equipped now to go into battle because she's got that force missile... She's got some blessings. Yeah, maybe it is actually worth just having her stick around. And, I mean, she's stronger with Valeros here. That's, yeah, okay. So I will increment our Time's Up deck and have her explore. It is a ghost. Well, she is the perfect player to player character to go up against a ghost. Because if Valeros had gone up against a ghost, he wouldn't have been able to do anything because he doesn't have a plus one weapon, I think. Yeah, see, if your check to defeat does not have the magic trait, the ghost is undefeated. Well, all she's got is magic, so this is perfect. So she can kill this thing with Wisdom Divine, 8. She doesn't have that. So she's just going to go have... To, she has to go straight into combat, like actual combat. Luckily, she's got... Oh, you know what she could... No, yeah, she needs to kill this creature. I was going to say, luckily, uh, she could evade the creature and pass it over to to Valeros, but that wouldn't do anybody any good, because then it would go undefeated. So, 
Force Missile lets her use her D12 for her Charisma, 2D4 for um, Force Missiles, and then uh, she uh, has an automatic plus 2 anyway for using Arcane. Uh, and she's got another D4 from Valeros, and all she has to do is recharge this card. She's recharging that card. This ghost takes a 12, but we're knocking two of that off with her Arcane bonus. So essentially, I'm looking for a 10 on 3 D4 and a D12. So that's a 3. 3 again, 6. 7, 8. So, 8, as long as she doesn't roll a 1. She rolled an 11. So she defeats this ghost. Okay, so now, hear me out. A little bit nervous, because if she encounters the henchman at this point, she doesn't really have anything she can do to deal with that. Unless she were to cast Invisibility. Then she could evade the creature and let Valeros uh, take, t take a swing at it. So that's, that's a possibility. And really that's all she... Well, and, or she could discard something and... Like a blessing so that she can cast her innate spell. But I feel like I've expended a bunch of cards on sort of getting through a, a deck. This is one of those moments, like in the last, the previous scenario, I just feel like the choice that I make here could ripple through as my timer deck gets smaller and smaller. And I just can't decide whether it's worth spending a spell you know what I think it's probably worth doing right now is just casting Detect Magic because she can recharge that. She doesn't have to discard it because she's a sorceress and she has that ability. And we can just scry the top of this deck. If this is not a henchman, then that's the henchman. It's a henchman. So this is a Wrathful Sin Spawn. Before the encounter succeeded a Wisdom Check, where the difficulty of the check is increased by 1. So it'll be probably a 10, unless she gets a... Uh, unless she rolls a 6 on her d6 wisdom. So we could... she could go up against this. If I spent a... like a blessing to explore once more, she could go up against this sin spawn. But then what would she be rolling? I guess she could go invisible and let Valeros take it, where she could discard a blessing to use her arcane spell, which is a d6 plus 6 plus a d4 from Valeros. And the problem with the blessings are, of course, that they're really good for exploration, because you can just burn through them to explore. So do I want to spend an exploration for her to be able to use a spell? I think it would be smartest, yeah, to not do anything here. To just pass it over to Valeros. We know what we're up against. We know exactly what we're up against. And I feel pretty confident that he can take it. So I think that's what I'll do. So, ticking over. This is a Wrathful Sin Spawn. What's the, what's the closing? Wisdom or Perception 6 to close a location. These are just not the strong areas of our, of our party. Um, this is a Wrathful Sin Spawn. We know that. Wisdom check 6 for Valeros. That's a d4. Plus 1, because I gave him a plus 1 to level up. So he fails. That means that this is a 10, not a 9. But he's well equipped for this. He can, in fact, reveal this card. 
to add a d10 to his roll. So he could be rolling 2d10. Or we could reveal, we could discard this card to add a d6. So that's his strength plus a d8 for the sword. Discard it for another d6. And that's not even counting the fact that he has a plus 3. I'm totally doing this. Now, the great thing about Valeros is that he has a special skill where he doesn't have to discard a weapon if it tells him to discard. He can just recharge it instead. We're not even losing that card. We're just cycling it. Okay, so what was the... T yeah, so he's got a d10. Who cares? Let's just roll the die. So that's a 4. So he's got seven total now, so he needs three more on on these two die. Four, so he's just killed the sin spawn um, pretty, pretty solidly. So that sin spawn is dead. And if defeated, of course, you can attempt to close the location. To close this location... Succeed at a Wisdom or Perception 6. And there is literally no way Valeros can do that right now. He can banish this for a stealth boost. And that's it. That's all he can do. Is there anything Sione has to, to give him? Or, or, like, can she do something? Discard this card to explore. Discard to add. If you encounter this card... You may instead treat this card as it were identical to the top card of the Blessings. What's this one? Discard this card to add a die to a check. Discard this card to add two to non-combat. But, so can this be used for another player, or does it have to be used for the player who, who is playing it? That's a good question, so I guess I'll be looking that up now. Okay, so it's pretty explicit in the rules, although as I did notice in a previous scenario, uh, the rules have changed a little bit since they were printed. If you look up the rules online, the PDF is actually a little bit different here and there. So I haven't looked at the PDF online because that's not convenient for me right now, but the, the box that I purchased with the book that I got says... Play cards that affect the check. Optional. Players may now play cards from their hands to affect the check. Each player may play no more than one of each card type. So, for example, two different players may each play one spell to help your check. But no single player may play two spells. Players may not play cards at this time unless the cards affect your check. Players may not play cards that modify a skill unless you're using that, that skill. So, in other words, Sioni can use a card to help Valeros' check to close this location. That's what I just read, right? So, I think I'm going to have her use a Blessing of the Gods. Now, this is where it gets kind of cool, because the Blessing of the Gods says, you may instead treat this card as if it were identical to the top card of the Blessing's discard pile. And on the Blessings discard pile right now is the Blessing of Kalistra. And what it's, one of its abilities is to discard this card to add two dice to a non-combat... Oh, dex check. Darn it, that's not as cool as I'd hoped. I missed the dex line. Okay, that's fine. It's okay. So, we're going to instead... Discard this card to add one die to a check. And it's difficult to understand what one die means, because it doesn't say what that means. And the way I've been playing it so far is that whatever you're rolling, you just roll two of those. So succeed at a Wisdom or Perception 6 check. Valeros has his d4 is d4 and then a plus one for leveling up after the very very first scenario so he needs to roll five on two d4 there's a two and there's a one so that's four total so he did not close this location it's really too bad because that was a that was a costly 
costly loss because I just spent a, a blessing card to try to get rid of that. So that's that's just too bad. But um, that's how it happens. Okay, so he needs to draw back up to his hand size. Oh, wait a minute. He failed to check at this location. So he has to discard the top card of his deck. And now he'll draw up to his hand size. And now Sioni will spend a timer card. What does this do? Discard this card to add a die. Discard this to two die to a check to recharge a card. Discard this card to acquire to explore. Yeah, okay. Could really use help with wisdom here, honestly. Um, okay. So I we know what this is. No, we don't. Do we? Yeah. Well, we we know that whatever this is, we know that we're gonna have to close this location by succeeding at a wisdom or perception. Sioni's wisdom is a d6, so she would have to roll a 6 on a d6, which just doesn't feel all, it doesn't really feel like a sure thing. However, she has a blessing of the gods, so she could discard it to roll 2d6 in hopes of getting a 6 to close this location. And we do need to close the location. It is really important to do that, so I guess that's what we'll do. Pit trap, of course. So if defeated, you may immediately explore again. If undefeated, you're dealt 1d4 combat damage, and we're going to lose the top card of our deck. So she can use a dexterity acrobatics to get an 8, and her dex dice is an 8. So that's not great. But I mean she has to she has to try. And I feel like I'm probably gonna end up using well, you know what? Nope. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to use a blessing to get her another D eight. So that's what we'll do. Five four. So that's a nine, so she succeeds. So she takes no damage. And this pit trap is put back into the box. So we're back where we left off. We can now attempt to close this location. Succeed at a wisdom or perception six. She has a d6. I'm going to discard yet another blessing to add another d6 to her roll. So she needs to get a six between two d6. That's a four and a six. Locations closed. That was pretty painful. That was that was rough, but I don't feel like we're we're in too terrible of a place. Um, I mean, actually, we're in a horrible place. All of these locations are really really bad. I think the least horrible one is the village house. So I think maybe we'll go there next in hopes of boosting up their decks like I did last time, and and see what happens from there. Because the shrine of Lamash too. And the Catacombs of Wrath are going to be tough. Okay, so next time we will resume with Valeros' turn and see what happens. Thanks for watching.